Hey guys, I'm Ash from AC Woodwork. Um, I'll drop my link below acwoodwork.com.au or on Facebook AC Woodworks with two S's. Um, I have been a spoon carver for four, four or five years or so um, and I probably do something that is maybe out of habit from myself and a, a mate of mine, Denny, who taught me to carve. Uh, we never really finished our spoons and went back to them, I guess. And that's what I wanted to chat about today is finished carving, uh, dry or green. Uh, it's another hotly contested issue. There's very few other people that I know that don't rough carve their spoons and then finish carving when dry. Uh, and it's definitely a topic that gets a lot of people confused or worked up or uh, have very firm opinions on, but I'm here to chat about how I do it and to talk about different ways that maybe you might read in books or watch online or see other carvers do. So I'm a self-confessed green finished spoon carver. I don't carve my spoons and let them dry uh, and go back to them. It's something that I don't have time to do. I am pretty pretty busy. I have a business making art. I'm a social worker full time. I'm a father. I try and get to the gym. I try and rub a bike. Uh, trying to fit everything in is kind of hard. So when I sit down to carve a spoon, that is it. It is axed out, carved, oiled, left. Job is done. There's not many other people I know that do it this way. Uh, Jeff Dunn, I know he's an Australian spoon carver and puppet maker. Um, he definitely does. He told me uh, at a marmalade spoon carving event that we have here in Australia and he, yeah, he communicated that he's the same. Don't have time to go back to a spoon. So I'm here today to show you a few of my spoons to see, I guess, what the difference is. So both of these spoons here um, are identical templates. Uh, one's slightly smaller, I may have axed out the line, but they're both made out of cherry, believe it or not. Different parts of the tree, but they're both made out of cherry. And this one was left to dry and finish carve. This one was finished carving green, oiled, and that was it. To look at, there is absolutely no difference between the two. They don't feel any different. They don't look any different. The edges aren't any different. They don't have raised furry bits of, of wood. They don't have tear out. They are, for all accounts, perfectly identical spoons. And if you put these up to anybody to look at, I, I hazard a guess that no one could pick the difference between the two. Um, these spoons, for example, one is Silky Oak, one is Banksia from the South Coast. Again, both of these were finished green. I carved these thing in a market stall one day, um, oiled and, and that was kind of it. This particular wood, Silky Oak, doesn't carve very nicely when it's dry. It becomes flaky and rough. No matter how sharp your tools are, it's still rough and it it's hard to describe, it's kind of like a biscuit, I guess. It turns into a bit like a biscuit, a flaky biscuit. Um, but green, it's like butter. Uh, and it finish carves really nicely, it gives a very, very smooth finish. Um, and the same for Banksia. Banksia can be carved dry, I know a lot of people that do carve it dry. Polly uh, is an Australian spoon carver as well. Polly definitely carves his dry. But again, comparing these two to other people's spoons, there's, to be honest, no visible physical difference. The times when it definitely pays to not have to worry about doing this is a hard, dense wood. Chinese pistachio, this spoon here, is definitely one of those. It is incredibly hard wood to carve. Um, hickory wattle, acacia species, uh, they're all kind of similar, really dense, really hard, tough on your tools, but they take a really nice polish straight off the knife without having to do anything further. Um, times when it may pay you to do a little bit of finish carving can be when you're using something really soft. Now, we don't really get a lot of birch here, which I know American and European carvers luckily get their hands on. Uh, most of our wood here in Australia is pretty hard. Um, it's 
it's not the friendliest and we mostly we look for European trees. Um, poplar is one. This is a poplar eating spoon. Poplar, if you're carving the heartwood, carves perfectly fine, green. Finish, finish it, oil it, no problem. When you start to use the sapwood, so the lighter colored white wood, the sapwood in particularly a poplar is incredibly soft and does not take a very good finish green. So that's an example of a spoon that you would probably do a little bit of clean up on if you were carving some of the, the sapwood. I'll stick away from that if you could. But I guess today looking to, to chat and show you guys different sorts of spoons and to show you two spoons done exactly the same wood but have very different finish methods but you could not tell the difference. It's something that not a lot of people talk about. It's kind of an unwritten rule that you rough carve your spoons, you put them away for a few days, let them dry and then and finish. But I guess here's a reminder, give it a go. Try something different. Um, burnish after, I burnish here. You can use antlers, stones, the back of your knife, the handle of your knife. As long as whatever you are using is harder than, and smooth, obviously, than the wood that you are carving, um, rub it on finish it off, but burnish your wood green, oil it, let it sit for a few days, oil it again, and see if there's any difference. I hazard a guess it's probably not gonna be too different and you've saved yourself a whole heap of time going back and having to refinish your spoons. Hope that was a good tip. Enjoy your carving.